sure what's going on. Sounds like the Sabbat's getting scattered. I'm gonna keep an ear to the ground. Be careful going forward here. Could be a whole mess of them hold up. <laughs> the more the merrier. <laughs> Alright, so let's keep going. So now the game's gonna basically teach us about disciplines. Now the game's gonna have you take a different route. Well, not a different route, but basically it's gonna tell you use a specific discipline for each one thing. And since this was, since disciplines are clan specific, it's gonna tell you to kind of go around these in a different way, but uh, I'm playing as Bruja. I'm not going to be showing like all of them or like in what order because I'd literally have to go through and play the tutorial for every single one. And this tutorial is kind of long, I'm not going to lie. So uh, one discipline that I noted in character creation that every single vampire has in common, well, yeah, I think every single vampire has in common is blood buff. Now if you try and lockpick this door right here, it's below difficulty. Uh, well, it's too difficult for us. It's difficulty 3, and our lockpick, if I remember correctly, is 1, I believe. No, it's 2. So, but if we blood buff ourselves and check our character sheet, our lockpick is now 5 because it's a mixture of dexterity and security. Our dexterity is 5 because of this. So we can try and lockpick now. And we're successful. So, as I'm playing as a Bruja Vampire, Bruja have three unique disciplines. They have Potence, Solari, and Presence. Now the game's going to tell you basically a very short description of every single discipline that you have and it's going to have you go through this tutorial area depending on which clan you are with these three, dis three different disciplines. I know for a fact that like Malkavian I think in order goes Obfuscate, Dementation, and then I can't even remember the third one right now but uh, our first one is Presence. Presence is a passive discipline and it is not a masquerade violation which is very very handy and uh, also uh, it's the game's gonna say if you look at right next to the blood buff in the bottom right you'll see that little gray bar on the side that's gonna tell you how long your disciplines last so there's a sabot guard in the next room we're gonna use presence to frighten him and kill him i believe uh yeah i don't remember what the game even does if you're malkavian malkavian i always say malkavian because i'm weird so we're gonna have to use presence and yeah we're like not even doing a lot of damage with our melee weapon but he's dead, so I'm actually going to, real quick, uh, just equip Fist, because I think we're actually, I think we're actually going to do more damage that way. So, hey Jack. I think they're clear now. No need to go stirring up the hornet's nest till we know the score, though. Head through here. Come to an elevator around the way. Alright, I'll meet you over meet there. You there. Don't let him catch you. No problem. <laughs> if I'm not there in ten minutes, call the president. Oh, this game's writing. This game's writing is just so unbelievably good. Alright, so, uh, the next discipline that the game wants us to use is Potence. It is super strength. Uh, we're going to, it's not a Masquerade violation, which is kind of interesting. I guess using it to violate the Masquerade would be one, but, uh, just by itself, not a Masquerade violation. We're going to use Potence to kill Vampire right here. It's also, it's more effective when using a melee weapon, I believe. Which, you know, really, really useful that I just went and equipped my fist, but... Yeah, I believe it's... Uh, I actually am not quite sure why, but... We're just gonna whack him with the tire iron a bit. I don't think the game actually requires you to use your tire iron right here. I think it's just like, oh, hey, you probably should use it. Yeah, yeah, it gives you plus one in strength, so... That's probably why. Which, that's not really that overwhelming, but we also only have potence level one. So, celerity! Anyone who's played this game knows how absolutely amazing Celerity is. Celerity is a passive or time-based discipline. Uh, use of Celerity is levels 2 through 5 is a masquerade violation. Celerity level 1 is not. It is super speed. You can do a whole lot of things with Celerity in this game. So we're going to use Celerity to kill this Sabat guard. By activating. Now let's run up and whack him. Now we're actually moving a lot faster than he is. And I actually accidentally double tapped it but yeah basically we're just like absolutely super speeded right now and a lot of people are not gonna be able to catch up to how fast we are that's gonna be extremely useful in combat later and you can see how slow the door is moving so one other kind of unique feature of this game you don't really see this in a lot of other games but it's kind of really cool you can pick up an object and throw it and you can actually use this to distract people like there's a survive vampire right here so we're going to uh pick up this and throw it He's gonna go, huh? Wait, what? Alright, he didn't go for it. Hey, dude, go. Huh? 
it's yeah, you can actually if you can make it through the door, because it's a source game. Fucking humans. Gang bangers protecting their turf. Oh man. I'm here thinking it's Sabat moving up in here. It's the fucking locals are about to take one for the hood. Uh Jack, you might want to be a little quiet. There's kind of a vampire like literally right behind us, and you kinda of told me well, the game kinda of told me to be quiet and like sneak past them, so uh what do we do about these gang bangers? Probably seen too much. Here, take this 38. Fucking pea shooter, but a few shots and it'll take down a human. Man, it's nice being a vampire. Thanks. Well, I'm gonna want it back, so don't go die and lose it. I don't use guns much. They're noisy, they're clumsy, practically useless against vampires, but still, a kindred's gotta keep up with the times. And in modern day Los Angeles, that means coming strapped. Now Jack actually kind of gave us a hint right there, firearms are not exactly the most useful in this game, partially because, well, you actually have to invest in firearms as a skill, and also like, well here, Jack will even tell us himself, useless against vampires. Well, yeah, you know, some are more lethal than others, of course. Watch out for those shotguns, ouch, those things can smart, I tell you. Okay, I hear you. So yeah, firearms are not as useful as melee combat in this game, which, I don't know if that's something that's kind of nice or not, but like... Because melee combat in this game is kind of bad, but so are the firearms, so I don't know. It's kind of a the double-edged sword, I guess? I hear you. Head up and clear out what's left of them. Can't have them running their mouths about any of this. I'm going to make sure there's no stragglers around outside. All right, I got it. So we've been given a 38, which, you know, nice. We have a firearm. Uh, some weapons have an alternate firing mode. You can press tab to toggle alternate fire, and uh, you can use the the F2 button to equip it. Of course, I can't do that because mine isn't working for some reason. I actually have no clue why it isn't. I'm gonna guess it's something with like OBS and weird universal hotkey stuff. So range combat with combination of perception and firearms is uh, what affects how well you shoot a gun. It'll basically affect your accuracy and the spread of the cursor and speed, stuff like that. So uh, what we're supposed to do is actually go uh, equip it and we can probably stop crouching now. Though crouching will actually of course, like it should, make you a bit more accurate. So we're supposed to shoot these bottles, and you can see how amazingly accurate you are when uh, you have... How low is my range combat skill? It's two. We're a real winner, folks. <laughs> that wasn't even close. This really isn't even close. As you can see, we're... Okay, I would be more accurate in real life, and I haven't even ever shot a gun ever. And I know that sounds weird considering I'm from Texas, but like... Yeah, I've like never shot a gun. Oh, come on, I kind of want to like actually shoot these. Uh, dude. Oh my god, okay, I didn't mean to open the character sheet. Wow, that took way longer than it should have. <laughs> um, we're just gonna go back to equipping our fists, because that's kind of useful. For the longest time I thought you had to go through this door somehow. I thought it like wouldn't unlock until you shot all these things when I played this game for the first time. But oh yeah, also our character does not like interacting with that wheel apparently. But yeah, we're supposed to just go through the elevator and we're supposed to go to the second floor, not the first floor, because we are on the first floor. Ooh, there's some guys in here. I think the game's gonna tell us to use our ranged firearms, but I'm not gonna do that. Because I can literally just whack these guys and do like a million damage. So, oh, well this might have been a nice time to know that before we just whack them. Combat is not the only solution for sticky situations, and this is probably the best solution given how amazing the combat in this game is. Uh, you can do, you can use your feats and disciplines and dialogues, and you can persuade people, you can seduce people, which is usually pretty funny, and you can also intimidate people. Uh, <laughs> this is basically a lot of the source of the amazing grinding in this game, and it's going to be how you're getting a lot of stuff done in this game, is you're going to be persuading people or intimidating people. Just like how you would in an active ball game, you don't want to reduce everything down to combat. So the guy also dropped a baseball bat for us, that could be useful, and let's go see Jack. For one last time. That's it, kiddo. Just like that, and it's all over. Everyone slinks back to their corners of the city for the night. That's it? It's all over? Until the next night when the Camarilla finds some way to strike back. Barry Dodge spinning all that, and so on, and so on, and so on. <sighs> Vampire politics are just like in real life. I'm already getting a headache. Well, to be honest, you came at a, well, an interesting time, let's say. 
the Camarilla and the Sabat. Now, in L.A., these are the new kids on the block. There's already plenty of kindred at stakes down in California long before them. Now, we got every ancient kindred rivalry playing out all over the city. A lot of tension out there. A lot of fear. A lot of jittery, high-strung predators clinging to their little pieces of eternity. Just like real-life politics. Oh, boy. Oh, I think they're looking for you outside. Guess you've got a cab to catch. I was hoping to fill you in on a little bit more, but... Ah, hell, you'll figure it all out. Thanks, Jack. If you make it back, stop in at the last round. It's this bar downtown here. I'll fill you in on the politics. <laughs> now that's the stuff that'll kill you. <laughs> Good luck. Oh, I love you, Jack. So, we've received two experience points if you saw that little note at the top of the screen and also the little sound that made the... Vroom. That's probably the worst imitation of that sound ever. So by uh, going to the character sheet, uh, we can spend our experience. Now two experience points is not enough to do anything. I believe the lowest cost is three for everything. Yeah, these are all three. Uh, I believe it's three basically to increase abilities to either uh, one or two. And beyond that, I believe it's different costs for everything in the game. I actually, I don't really remember. But yeah, we have two experience. It's not going to be useful right now, but you know, it could be kind of nice later. Hello, LA. You're up way past and that's it for the tutorial in this game. And I'm going to turn off this stupid radio because it's annoying. That's it for the tutorial of this game. We're in our little haven in Santa Monica. We get this amazing 2004 view out of our window. Now I think that's going to be all for this part. So join us back here next time in Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines as we go and meet that agent that Lacroix told us about. Mercurio, I believe was his name. And we kind of get involved in the vampire scene here in LA. That's That just sounds so weird to say. Anyway, thank you all for watching and peace out. Youngsters these days. Well, your funeral, kill, But keep a couple things in mind before you go. Now these lessons aren't just for your benefit, so listen up. First, the masquerade. You can hear a lot about this, so let me sum up real quick. Sure, you're a vampire. Great. Keep it to yourself, okay? It's easier that way, trust me. That's the masquerade. Keeping vampire secrets secret. Easy, right? Easy peasy. Now, if you violate the masquerade, if you run around spooky demons or whatever, you make things hard on all of us. Then all of us get pissed off and we come after you. And you end up like your sire there. Stick to me. Then they kill. Right on. Next, humanity. Being a vampire isn't the end of the road. You think life was hard? Just wait. Now you're half beast, half man, and it ain't quite an easy fit. You're gonna be fighting that beast for the rest of your days every time you get into it. Whenever you kill an innocent, you beat the beast a little more, and it grows a little stronger. After a while, the beast can take over. He'll go wild and have to be put down like a rabid dog. So, you know, fight it. Don't be a homicidal maniac. That'll help with the masquerade, too. See how it all comes together? Ain't that nice? Now, with all that said, you still have to keep your ass alive. For that, you're gonna have to feed. That's a little blood sound, kill. I imagine you're feeling that thirst right about now, huh? Get it where you can, however you can. Just remember the first two lessons. Don't let anyone else see you feeding. They'll flip out and cause you to break the masquerade and cause some bigger, badder vampire to come stomp a mud hole in your ass. Also, drink feet, but don't drain them dry. See, that's giving in to the beast. You do that, you lose your grip on your humanity and you lose control. There we go again. It all fits together. Can you dig it? Righteous. Now, ship off like a good little soldier. Pull this off, come downtown to the last round, and I'll tell you how jacked this whole situation is. Until then, <laughs> good luck. Or maybe I should just say, uh, nice knowing you, kiddo. <laughs>